Hello, I'm Andrew Sosner, the Managing Director of Fine Audio. I'd like to welcome you to our brand new facility here in Bells Hill. We're on a 20,000 square foot site, and we're gonna take you inside in a minute and show you all the wonderful things that we're doing in here. Okay, you're in the building now, and uh, we're gonna start here in our reception area. And as you see, lined up here, we have an array of some of our products here. And we'll be taking you through more information about all of these products later. So we're just going to take a walk through the office area, into our new meeting room, and into the new dem area that Dr. Paul has voiced and got ready for all the developments we're doing. In the dem area, we have our vintage um, and classic range for a quick look through. So we're going to go through here to the demo room. So this is our demo room. Um, Dr. Paul and his team use this for all the product development and evaluation. And you can see we have a, you know, some of our products um, lined up here um, for listening purposes. Well, as you see, it's a fairly large space. As I said, the whole area is 20,000 square foot. This warehouse would be around 8,000 square feet of that. So you'll have seen from the, the flyover video that we have solar panels on our roof. We've got uh, almost 200 panels up there. And all the energy from those panels comes down and it goes into these two inverters that are standing here right next to me. And it converts from DC to AC, which we'd use in the factory. But the really cool thing about that is we've got really clean, almost as clean as you can get energy going straight into our dem room, into our research labs, which is absolutely fantastic for really good clean development and listening to the, the sound that our speakers are making. Let's move on. Okay, so we're just going to move on through the finished goods warehouse. As you can see, we have a fair amount of stock. It's a fact of life in the audio world, we have to have stock. It's a big investment for any audio business and the same for us. So we're entering our second warehouse area here. This is almost primarily component stores in here. So all the individual components we need to buy in that we then used to assemble into our loudspeaker. So it could be uh, metal work, could be com electronic components. Anything is, is in this part of the warehouse. This segment of the warehouse is our manufacturing area here. So I'd like to, to welcome you into this part. This is the most crucial part of the whole operation. So in here, it's all it's the individual stages of assembly here. So batch production. We have individual um, elements of the, the product all made. So we're going to take you through one by one just so you can see how we build up a loudspeaker. So Alec here is going to start assembling a driver so you can see the, the steps required to pull a driver together. He, he's pre-prepared some of these components. We, we would normally have to prepare the magnets with, through the magnetizer, which we'll show you in a second. But why don't you just watch Alec building a driver up? So that's the frame, the chassis frame there. He's already got together. He's putting the, the um, pole piece inside there now. It's a torque setting. A torque setting there, yeah, okay. So we've got to set the, uh, the torque at a certain level. So he's now, he's now going to put a cone in here. So the cone, we've already prepared this cone. We've added the voice kill. We've added the, the spider to that cone. So the next stage is to, is to actually glue that cone and position that cone in the uh, in the driver. He's got to add adhesive for the spider assembly. Yeah, 
and got a bad adhesive for the surround. Well, the surround goes on. So the most crucial thing here is getting the, the cone positioned really accurately inside the, the chassis, inside the, over the pole piece. So this is just one, we don't normally do a batch of five of these together. Then, then Alec would do the next stage of adding the HF assembly to that to create the full driver. That's it. Crucial part, this is the beating heart of all of our loudspeakers. So one of the most crucial um, bits of assembly that we're doing. Thank you, Alex. These are all cones ready to go. Build up drive. This is a 15 inch, 15 inch cone. Um, but this has already been prepared by us. We've already, we've already uh, connected the spider and the voice cone to this, to this cone. So this is ready to go. This is the uh, a crossover assembly right here. Uh, we've got a lot of crossovers. Again, batch production here. We built all our own crossovers and we build them it's a point-to-point -point system here. So we, we don't like circuit boards because circuit boards um, you know, affect the actual audio quality, uh, mainly because of the closeness of, of, the, of the tracks on the circuit boards. So we go for a point-to-point -point system. It looks like it's a bit rough and ready, but this board really helps in terms of keeping things in the right place and it has no acoustic interaction with the, with the electronics. Um, it's designed the spacing on this is very crucial, designed again by Paul. So, so um, the spacing between the components, the, the connections, the tracks, the way the tracks are laid are also very important. Because what we're trying to do is, is, is maximize the, the signal path here and minimize any interference and interactions between the components. This segment here is, is cable harnesses. It's very important inside a loudspeaker, you have lots of cables. So we have to make those cables, A, with, with the quality of the cable, with the crimping and the connections to the cable. So we have a whole selection of crimping machines here, to make sure those crimps go on correctly and, and again, maximizing the, the, the current through there. And um, so yeah, so lots of different cable harnesses. Every speaker has a slightly different length and number of cables and quality of cables. So again, it doesn't seem like it, but a lot of work involved in that. So this is our cryogenic area here. We're one of the very, very few audio manufacturers to have our own cryogenic facility here. And it's something that, that we've had since we started and, and we have done a lot of measurements on, on product with and without cryogenic treatment. So we know um, adding a cryogenic treatment improves the performance of the, of the product. And what it's doing there is, is it's removing micro stresses that occur in the electronics it's really in the wiring or the crossover area particularly. You know, when you're building it, you're adding stresses by soldering and flexing all the wires and cables. Putting it in here, de-stresses and all of that and takes all of these micro stresses out, which means a cleaner signal going through the loudspeaker. Yeah, if I can just say, uh, this was in the beginning of its cycle, so the temperature had only reached 118, minus 118 there. Actually, now I'm looking at it. Well, it's got minus 119 now, but it's, it's on its way down to minus 150. Uh, and we can keep it at minus 150 for a secret period of time. <laughs> and then we warm it back up again, back to, back to room temperature. So the whole, the whole cycle takes about four days. So it's quite a long time. So we try and maximize what we can put in here. And to, because we've always got a new product coming through to, to, to cycle through in here. So we need this process running all the time. Uh, currently we have three uh, final assembly build stages. So we go all through these various sub-assembly areas and then we move into the final assembly here and got three different assemblies. Depends on the, on the requirement, how much throughput we need. Right now we've just got one running and we're building some classic SPs here. You 
can see all the various parts I've been talking about. There's the wiring, the wiring harness, the wiring harness inside here, the crossover uh, down inside the product. What we're fitting here is the presence controls and the HF level controls. That's another, that's a, another manufacturing operation that we, that we do here to make this whole control assembly. Once we've finished the full manufacturing assembly, I mean, each of the, the sub-assemblies are all tested quality-wise themselves and all checked as a special jig for testing every single sub-assembly. But then we build it into the complete product. But once it's built into the complete product, we have to test the complete product. And we have our own test booth for doing that very purpose. And here's a product just about to head in. So we've got a special um, testing process here. All the distances are already checked or set with jigs already. So we don't have to do any kind of alignment of that. And we've got a Clio test kit in here. So once Kevin's got this fully set up. We'll do a complete frequency sweep using the Clio system. It's all stored on the uh, on the laptop over there. So every product has its own kind of identity and its own record that we hold on the system. We register it against the individual serial numbers. So if anything then subsequently happens, and let's face it, occasionally it does, we've got a record of when we built a product, who built the product our own tests so we can try and work out if something's gone wrong, how it happened, so we try and avoid it happening again. So there's a few different tests going on there, different adjustments because we've got, we've got controls, presence control, we've got HF level control, we need to make sure it's working at the full extremes of those controls. And this is the final car quality check area and then packing and assembly area here. So the partner for that product we just tested is just about to come through here. They'll do a quality check. Uh, there's, a, there's a process for checking all the different areas where there might be a defect. This is a visual check at this point. Once it's all okay, we'll get it packed up and ready to go. So we've got some goods just leaving at the moment and some other goods just arriving here. This is our main dispatch and receipt area for the business. Why don't you come with me and we'll walk outside to the yard we've got out here. This is one of the reasons that we decided to buy this facility because it has a huge potential for expansion. Uh, if we need to grow the business and so we need to expand the factory in, in either this way or we could go up, up the way. And so we've got a lot of space here around us in this 50,000 square foot um, space on a 20,000 square foot building. So that tells you there's a lot of space around the building. Hi there, it's Alan here from Loud & Clear Glasgow. Loud & Clear is Scotland's premier hi-fi and home cinema retailer and installer. The purpose of this channel is to give you a little bit of insight into some of the behind the scenes of the hi-fi industry. We're interviewing some techs, some salespeople, and we're trying to find out some really interesting information about some of the brands we know and love. If you think this is the kind of thing that might be of interest to you, please like and subscribe.